Radical halogenation, often called the light reaction, compared to the non-radical dark reaction, is a reaction where an asymmetric alkene, for example this 2-methyl-2-butene, reacts with HX, here HBr, in the presence of peroxide to give us an anti-Markovnikov less substituted product, where the bromine will add to the secondary carbon and the hydrogen adds to the tertiary, more substituted carbon. Compare this to the regular hydrohalogenation reaction that does not take place in the presence of peroxide, where when the pi bond breaks, the bromine adds to the tertiary or more substituted carbon, and hydrogen adds to the secondary or less substituted carbon. This is the Markovnikov product, but the radical reaction is the opposite, giving us the anti-Markovnikov product. Since radical reactions are initiated by heat or light, this is often called the light reaction, and the non-radical reaction often called the dark reaction. Two things to remember before we jump into the mechanism. The first is that Markovnikov's rule is less about the product itself and more about the stability of the intermediate that drives this specific outcome. And two, since this is a radical reaction, we'll be referring to the initiation and propagation and termination steps. If you're not comfortable with either, pause this video and see the tutorials linked below, or go to my website, layerforsci.com slash radical. Ready? Let's take a look. Most alkene reactions begin where the nucleophilic pi electrons will reach out and attack some kind of electrophile. Not in this reaction. Radical reactions always begin with the initiation step with a formation of a radical, and in this case, peroxides are going to set it off. Recall from general chemistry that peroxide, or peroxide, is a molecule that has an oxygen bound to another oxygen atom. You're probably very familiar with hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and you've likely come across some alkyl peroxides written as ROOR. For this reaction, we'll look at a methyl peroxide, which is a CH3 bound to an oxygen, bound to an oxygen, and bound to another CH3. Unlike the initiation for breaking apart something like chlorine or bromine, oxygen does not require too much input of energy because it's already so unstable. This is why the hydrogen peroxide in your medicine cabinet is in a dark bottle, because just the light in your bathroom is enough to start breaking those bonds. And that's exactly what happens here. We have a homolytic cleavage reaction where the oxygens each grab one electron and break apart to give us two OR radicals, in this case CH3, bound to an oxygen. Remember, each oxygen had two lone pairs. And now we get that extra single unpaired radical electron. This is very unstable and looking to attack another molecule. And if there's something like an HBr hanging around, oxygen will use its electron to attack that hydrogen, forcing hydrogen to provide one of its own electrons to form that bond. Remember, come over to dinner, but you got to bring dinner. And that second electron will break off onto bromine. The two products in this step include an alcohol, which comes from that CH3O radical combining with a hydrogen, along with an unstable and very reactive bromine radical that has three lone pairs and one lone electron from the bond between hydrogen breaking apart. Since we had one radical in the reactants and one radical in the products, this is a propagation step, and this unstable bromine radical is looking to continue this chain of propagation because it's unhappy as it is. And now, finally, that alkene comes into play. The alkene has two electrons that are sitting in p orbitals above and below the molecule, and that makes it very easy for a bromine radical to attack. When bromine attacks, it's looking to form a bond between itself and carbon, and one of the pi electrons will come up to meet it so that they can form a bond, where the second electron will break onto the molecule to sit as a lone electron 
on one of the carbon atoms. The question is, which one? And this step here is critical because the stability of this intermediate is what determines the regioselectivity of the final product. My two options are to place bromine on the more substituted carbon with a bond between itself and that red lone electron, giving me that blue lone electron as a radical on the secondary carbon. My second option is to place bromine on the secondary carbon with a bond between itself and that blue pi electron, leaving the red electron to sit as a lone radical on the tertiary carbon. The way to determine the final product is to understand the stability of the radical intermediate. It's not about the bromine. Bromine is looking to meet either of the two electrons. Instead, it's about understanding which intermediate is more stable and that intermediate is more likely to form. If you recall that radical stability is the same as carbocation stability, in that the more substituted radical is the more stable radical, you'll see that this is the preferred intermediate. Because the radical sits on a tertiary carbon, having the support of one, two, three other carbon atoms. But even a stable tertiary radical is still a radical, and that means it's still very reactive. And so it looks for another molecule of HBr floating around in solution and attacks the hydrogen to form a bond, forcing hydrogen to provide one of its own electrons and causing that second electron to break off onto bromine. This gives us our final product with a bromine sitting on the secondary or less substituted carbon, a hydrogen atom bound at the tertiary or more substituted carbon and another bromine radical floating around in solution. Since we have a radical in the reactants and another radical in the products, this is yet another propagation step where bromine is going to look for another alkene to attack, ultimately forming another bromine radical, and another one, and another one, and so on. A quick note about the stereochemistry of this reaction. Notice that bromine is sitting on a secondary carbon that now has four unique substituents. We have a methyl, an isopropyl, bromine, and an invisible hydrogen atom. That means this right here is a chiral carbon, but because we're starting with an alkene, which means an sp2 carbon atom that is trigonal planar or flat, bromine can attack from the top or the bottom, so that if the final product is chiral, we get a racemic mixture with 50% R and 50% S. For even more on radicals, covering everything from formation, hybridization, resonance, to radical reactions and more, visit my website linked below or go to layerforsci.com slash radical. The link again is layerforsci.com slash radical. You can find my entire alkene reaction series along with the alkene reaction cheat sheet and practice quiz by visiting my website link below or going to layerforsci.com slash alkene reactions.